message received via Jupiter link. Fuck. Duncan, hello. Whoa, hey Joe. How are you doing? I'm very good, mate. How are you? Very, very exciting to be talking to you uh, about this film. Ten years. It's hard to believe that we are both ten years older than we were when we first met. <laughs> <laughs> ten years, I know. It's, it's, um, uh, I'm finding it hard to believe myself. Before we get into everything that happened after Moon release, let's start way back at the very, very beginning. I'm really curious to know like, where your interest in cinema began. Movies, in particular English language movies, which at the time were, were a rarity for me because we were traveling abroad a lot, were always kind of a, a, a way to touch base and feel at home a little bit because the movies could travel with you back in, you know, you, VHS and even Sony Umatic days a long time ago. How are things down there? You guys been to any good parties or anything? Oh, thanks for the, uh, the for the football feed, and it almost felt uh, alive, and uh, almost. First of all, to set yourself the challenge of, of, of shooting a film in which your two lead characters are the same. Ah, ah. And you know, you do in the film combine very, very subtle CG work with model miniatures, that kind of traditional uh, filmmaking. Was that, was that always very much the goal for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we'd all kind of come up together. Uh, Gavin Rothery, who has his own film, Archive, I think, coming out soon, which is also kind of, I think, got the same feel as, as Moon. We all enjoyed and looked, harked back to science fiction from, from that period, mainly because we were working on Moon. There really wasn't much like that um, that, was, that was coming out. It was, it was a much more blockbuster popcorn era for sci-fi at that particular moment. And we were like, I do wish, with the, wish there was something a little bit more meaty, a little bit more, a little bit more thinky <laughs> than, than what was available at that time. And then all of a sudden, you know, we came out, and I think District 9 came out, and, and it felt like there was a, there was a, new, a, a new wave of, of science fiction that was trying to reclaim that, the, the genre for things beyond ju just effects spectacle. Good morning, Gertie. Good morning, Sam. How are you today? Fine. Fine. How's the hand? Oh, it's a little sore. A little sore. It's okay. It was for breakfast. Where does the story idea start? Like, you know, how did that kind of come to you? So I had a, a feature script that I'd been working on for a long time, <laughs> which actually ended up finally getting made, something called Mute. And Mute was a city-based, near-future thriller with definitely too ambitious for a first feature, but I didn't know it at the time. And I sent it out to a number of different actors, and, and one of them was Sam Rockwell, who I was a huge fan of, and I wanted him to play this character. And Sam loved the script, but he had already played a number of villains and really wanted to kind of break out of that. And um, we had a chance to meet up. I was hoping to convince him. He was hoping to convince me that he could play the lead. We got a live one on Mark. I'm gonna go out now and rope her in. And again, what could I do to attract Sam Rockwell? What, what can I give him as a challenge, as a role, that would make him think, yeah, I'm willing to punt on this um, small little British independent film because there's something about it that I would really enjoy doing as an actor. And that's, you know, for any actor, the chance to act with yourself. <laughs> Goody! Goody! Turn him outside. Turn him outside. Where the stall harvester? Who is he? Who is he? We need to get him to the infirmary. You tell me who, who that is. You tell me who that is! Sam Bell. We need to get him to the infirmary immediately. Watching the film again, it was really interesting to, to remember just the complexity of the puzzle pieces that go into uh, the journey of the film, that, that you, you, you kind of get introduced to Sam 1, first of all, and then Sam 2 comes in before you even realise you've met Sam 2. I always thought that was a really neat trick to pull. There was always an option that the big third act reveal was, oh, he's a twin, <laughs> he's a clone, and that was one way to write that, that script but we never wanted to do that. We always thought we need to get the meeting early on because it's much more about the, the, the human because of the fact they're coming at the world from slightly different places. Um, and that's what this film was about. It's more a, um, a human drama than anything else. <laughs> I'm not a clone. I'm not a clone. <laughs> no. 
You're the clone. Okay, Sam. I'm not a clone. Imagine for Sam a very exciting thing to get his teeth stuck into, this, this notion that this is the same person based on the same template, and yet you have one that's, that's been around for three years longer than the other. And the reaction to learning the truth of, of themselves is, is, gonna be, is gonna happen at slightly different times for each of them. Yeah, it is that nugget of an idea of what can make science fiction, but all kinds of films stand out to you, matter. Is, you know, is, there, is there something in there that, that really kind of speaks to you on a deeper human level, and I think Getting a chance to know a version of yourself from a different period in your life, recognizing those differences, that's what Moon hit the nail on. You're not going anywhere. You know, you've been up here too long, man. You've lost your marbles. What do you think, Tess is back home waiting for you on the sofa in lingerie? What about the original Sam? Huh? I'm the original Sam! I'm Sam fucking Bell! Me! Whoa. Me! Gertie? Am I a clone? Are you hungry? Am I right in thinking when we first meet Sam Wan in the film, he's wearing this great t-shirt that says, wake me up when it's quitting time, which, uh, you know, ends up being the greatest hint at where the film is going to go. Is that his idea, that t-shirt? Uh, he just brought it. He brought it to the shoot. <laughs> get laid. I'm gonna go back to work. The, the script refers to these two characters as Sam 1 and Sam 2, but I mean they're not Sam 1 and Sam 2. In the world of the film, are we Sam 6 and Sam 7? Is that about right? I think it's 5, 6 and 7. So the film starts with 5 and then we kind of slip 6 in there without the audience knowing immediately. Then we have a whole bunch of 5 and 6 work and then at the very end 7 gets woken up. And then we hear a little bit of audio of the original Sam back on Earth. Eve? Yeah? Hi, hi Eve. How old are you now? I'm 15. How did mommy die, sweetheart? Dad? Yeah? There's someone asking about mom. Who's asking about mom? I also want to ask about Gertie. I was really surprised when people started writing about the film. There was a lot of comparisons to Hal from 2001 Space Odyssey. Gertie is kind of the anti-Hal. What he does in the film is so sweet. We wanted the audience to think of Hal and think of robots that turn on the humans as most sci-fi up until then had done. And then as the audience make those assumptions, turn it on its head and say, it's not the, the robots you've got to worry about, it's the humans back home. So we, you know, we tried to do that in the, in the script and in the performance of, of have this, this sense of, of not knowing you know, where Gertie stands and when is he going to turn on him, and he never does. He's completely true to his programming throughout the film. He's there to protect and look after Sam. Am I really a clown? When you first arrived at Sarang, there was a small crash. You woke up in the infirmary. You suffered minor brain damage and memory loss. I kept you under observation and ran some tests. I remember, yeah, I remember that. Sam, there was no crash. You were being awakened. It is standard procedure for all new clones to be given tests to establish mental stability and general physical health. Hopefully this this is an anthology that, that we'll soon see a conclusion to. I'd love to do the third piece. It's really, you know, we, we, we did Moon as this kind of little almost kitchen sink drama, this human chamber piece. And, and then Mute was very much kind of more of a kind of a 70s thriller. And, and the third piece is a really fun, but I think equally meaty action road movie. So we'll, we'll kind of have to see if we get the chance to make it. It should make for a really interesting triple feature if, if, we, if we ever get a chance to do that. High five. Duncan, I will be there day one. Thank you so much for taking this trip down memory lane with me. It's been fun to talk to you about this film again. Thanks, Joe. Now, uh, uh, we'll have to do it again in another 10 years. Oh, my God.